We love you, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. You are the reason of our existence. You are life. You are healing. You are blessing. You are our God, our Father. We thank you that you are always there for us, empowering us, encouraging us, listening to our call, listening to our prayers. You are our shield, our ever-present help in times of trouble. We give you praise and we give you honor. Glorify your name in all the earth. We love you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, once again, as we come before your presence, studying your word, I pray for your divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that our capacity in the spirit will be enlarged in order for us to receive what you want us to receive today. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify your name now and forevermore. From the beginning till the end of this study, speak to us in a very powerful way. This we pray in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The blessed people of God declare, Amen and Amen. A blessed Sunday to all of us. Kumusta po kayo? 
Purihin ng Panginoon at tayo po'y muling nagkakasama-sama para po muling mag-aral ng kanyang mga salita. We are now on the fifth uh, part of our series, How to Secure the Grace to Govern and the Power to Prevail. So we've studied in the last two Sundays that uh, the Lord is calling His people to live, uh, to live in righteousness, to learn righteousness. We are also we've also studied that uh, we need to deny ourselves, take up our cross. The cross means crucifixion or death. We we will crucify the lust of the flesh in order to follow God. So we've established last two Sundays that we can never follow God without first denying ourselves and dying to self. We've also studied about the characteristics of a man of stature. A man of stature is a person who is respected in heaven. An example for that is none other than Abraham. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he informed Abraham about his plan. And a man of stature is able to bargain, to speak to God, and uh, raised his plea before the Lord. But again, he asked if there are 50 righteous men, will God destroy the uh, Cana, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah? And God replied, for the sake of those 50 righteous, I will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So the bargaining goes on, went on. Ano po nangyayari? 40, 40, uh, 45, 40, 30, down to 10. Still the Lord told Abraham, for the sake of ten righteous, I will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So ito po ay mga malinaw lamang na patunay na ang Diyos ay hindi magpaparusa sa isang bayan, isang syudad, o isang bansa kung mayroong mga taong mamumuhay ng mayroong katuwiran. Purihin ang Diyos. For He had given us this revelation that God is calling His people in this season to learn righteousness and to go back to the path of righteousness. And God also showed us sa ating huling pinag-usapan that uh, prevailing is to defeat an opponent in a long or difficult contest or battle. Remember that this is a season the pandemic is running almost 11 months. So this is, no, this is not overnight. This is a season. So we need to understand. If you want to overcome, you want to survive, you need to receive the grace to govern and the power to prevail. Prevailing is fighting an opponent for a long time or difficult contest, but still you win the battle. Governing is to exercise ex uh, continuous sovereign and authority over your enemy. So we do believe in the name of Jesus that in this season, the people of God, 2021, the prophetic message and declaration is this is the year of governing and prevailing. And how we can do that? We can prevail and govern because we have the kingly anointing and the priestly anointing. And our anointing is patterned in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek has a kingly anointing. When you speak about king, it means rulership. Pag atin po itong nalakaran at napamuhay natin ang Melchizedek anointing, what will happen? We will rule and reign, govern and prevail in the midst of this pandemic. We do not know kung kailan ito matatapos. But one thing we know, God is at work and the people of God responding to His requirements, complying to His requirements, once it is complied, then the Lord will move 
I believe this is a judgment from God. In order to call the attention of all people on earth. Especially his church. And we need to respond to God accurately. By living and learning righteousness. So that the wrath of God. The anger of God will be pacified. The moment na makita siya ng righteous. He will not pour out his wrath or judgment anymore. But he will stop it. And I do believe by the power of God, he said in his word, nothing is so difficult for him but is impossible to man is possible with God. He has the capacity. He has the power. He is able and capable to stop this virus anytime. But first, he needs to see people living and walking in righteousness. So our message in this part 5 of the series, How to Secure the Grace to Govern and the Power to Prevail, is we need to live and be a preacher of righteousness. Live and be a preacher of righteousness. Live a righteous life and don't just live it, but preach, share righteousness in others. Our text can be found in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 9. Let me quote. Then the Lord saw that, he, that the wickedness of mankind was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. So the Lord was sorry, for he had made mankind on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Then the Lord said, I will wipe out mankind whom I have created from the face of the land. Mankind and animals as well as crawling things and the birds of the sky. For I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. So dito po pinapakita po sa atin, the best example, biblical example, Nang isang taong nabubuhay sa righteousness at the same time preaching righteousness is none other than Noah. Medyo mahirap pong kalalagayan ni Noah before. Why? Because ang sabi po rin sa ating binasa that every intent of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. Lahat ho ng laman ng kaisipan ng mga tao nung panahon ni Noah ang sabi sa Bible, it was written na pawang kasamaan. Ang laman ng puso. You can just imagine. People surrounding you have no intent, no other intention in their heart and mind but to do wicked things, to do evil. To the extent na ang kasamahan, kasamaan ng mga tayo umabot na sa sukdulan, umabot na sa langit, sa trono ng Diyos. It is why God decided to wipe out all mankind and all the living creatures on earth. But there is a man named Noah. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Isa hong paraan at magandang pag natin, how did Noah prevail and govern in spite of being surrounded by a wicked generation? Bakit mahalaga na pag-aralan natin ito, mga kapatid? Because, sabi po sa Bible in the book of Matthew, tinanong siya, paano po ba ang pagbalik ng anak ng tao? Paano po ba ang, pa- ang uh, panahon at pamamaraan ng pagbalik ng Panginoong Iso Kristo? Sabi ng Panginoon, it will be likened in the days of Noah. Tam niyo ho, nung aking mabasa yan, if I'm not mistaken, in the book of Matthew chapter 25, Mapapansin natin, people are marrying, people are enjoying. Ganon din po ang time ni Noah. Habang si Noah po ay nagbubuo ng arka, sa mahabang panahon, ang mga tayo walang pakialam. In the first place ng time ni Noah, ang mga tayo hindi pa po nakaranas ng ulan. At ang mensahe ni Noah, maganda kayo dahil babaha. Alam nyo, mahirap sa mga taong maniwala sa isang bagay na hindi pa nila naranasan. That is why si Noah ay kanilang pinagtatawanan. Si Noah ay kanilang tinutuya. Mukhang may tama ka na. Bakit mo sinasabing babae na pakataas ng araw? And in the first place, people doesn't uh, yet experience flood. Nagkaunawan po tayo? But Noah 
found favor in the eyes of God. His righteousness, his blamelessness, and his walk with God enable him to prevail and govern. Alam nyo, hindi ko po talaga maisip. Hindi po imposible na napapalibutan ka ng mga taong masasama, walang laman ng isip at puso, kundi pawang kasamaan. Malamang maraming temptations, maraming buyo, maraming pag, uh, kumbaga, eh, pang panunokso kay Noah. But Noah chose to live a righteous life and he chose to walk with God. Mga kapatid, hindi na po nasulat sa Bible, pero sa aking analysis, malamang. Tuwing makikita ng mga tao si Noah, kahit sila punong-puno ng kasama, sabi niya, wag mo na, wala kang mapapala dyan. Puro righteousness dyan. You know, in Hebrews 11.7, okay, Hebrews 11.7, tingnan niyo po sa inyong screen, ang sabi, By faith, Noah being warned by God about things not yet sinned, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Walang alam si Noah. Pero dal sinabi ng Diyos, alam niyo, mahalaga ho ito. What made Noah prevail? What made Noah govern? It was the word of God. Kung mayroon man tayong priority in order for us to secure prevailing and governing this year, especially during this pandemic time, it is none other than securing the word of the Lord, listening to the now word of God, listening to the fresh revelation of God's word. Alaga ho ng mga naririnig nating minsahe, lalo sa mga panahong ito, are relevant messages, messages that will give us counsel, messages that will give us guidance, how to overcome, how to prevail, how to govern. Because there are also messages that are not relevant for the season. Katulad ng marami pong mga nangangaral, ang pinapangaral, yung 666, pinapangaral, matap- malapit ang matapos ang mundo, nandyan na yung Antichrist. Mga kapatid, we are not teaching our people. Do not teach our people about the works of the devil. Let us teach our people about the work of God. Whether we like it or not, these prophecies are were already written in the Bible. Rather, let us teach our people the relevant messages. What are they need to receive? They need to receive the now word. They need to receive what to do to prepare, to prevail and govern in the midst of this pandemic. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it says, and did not spare the ancient world, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness. With seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. Noah was not just a righteous man. He is not just living in righteousness, but he is also a preacher of righteousness. Tingnan niyo po ako mabuti. One way of prevailing and governing is Noah chose. Importante yung desisyon natin. Na kahit na anumang mangyari sa ating kapaligiran, we will not allow these things to affect us. But we allow the presence of God to affect us. We allow the presence of God to cover us. He who dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. Alala niyo pong Psalms 91. Will abide in the presence of God. And we will become untouchable. Para praising ho sa Psalms 91, down. Pakita natin siya na naghangad ng pagkupkup sa kaitaasan, makapagsisibing muog katahanan. Nakapagsasabi siya na siya po ay aking sandigan at kailanman hindi po tayo ng Diyos pababayaan. God is greater than this pandemic and I want to submit this report to you. He still sits on the throne. And the one seated on the throne is the one dictating the tempo. He is the one in control of all situation. And I want to submit this report to you that the one seated in the throne of heaven is none other than God. And this God who sat at the throne of heaven is none other than our Father. Is our Father God. 
That is why when he saw Noah living in righteousness, when he saw Noah became a preacher of righteousness, he never forgot Noah. And the good news is this. Di lamang si Noah ang naligtas. Because on that moment, Noah was the only one left righteous. But God in His mercy and grace, alam ni Lord na si Noah ay malulungkot kung siya lang ang isa sasakay sa arko. That is why even his wife, even his children and his uh, his uh, daughter-in-laws na hindi rin nabubuhay sa righteousness, they were saved. Not because they, are right, they were righteous, but because Noah. Because of the righteousness of Noah. Alam niyo mga kapatid, living a righteous life before God and preaching a life of righteousness will not, will not only save us, but it will, only, it, will, it will also save our loved ones. Kaya walang talo ho kung tayo mabubuhay nang mayroong katuwir at kabanalan sa harapan ng Diyos. So one way of prevailing and governing is to make a decision to walk and live in righteousness and don't just live, not just live by righteousness, but become a preacher of righteousness. So in order to give clarity to our topic today, let us discuss the two kinds of righteousness. Okay, tingnan po natin. Number one, the righteousness of men. Meron po dalawa kasi, kasi meron po mga tao nagkasabi, ako'y walang inaagrabyado, ako ho ay walang uh, inaaping tao, kaya okay na po ito kahit hindi na po ako magsimba, kahit hindi, ko na po, hindi na po ako magiging makajos, ako na may mabuting tao. Tingnan po natin ang righteousness ng tao. The righteousness of man, number one, ano? Isaiah 64 verse 6, For all of us have become like one who is unclean. And all our righteousness or righteous deeds are like filthy rugs or filthy garment. And all of us wither like a leaf and our wrongdoings like the wind takes us away. This is called self-righteousness. Alam mo, sabi ng Diyos, ang self-righteousness ng tao, yung mga nagsasabing wala naman kinagrabyado, wala naman kung sinas inaapi, Basta ako'y mabait lang na tao. Hindi po yan po pwede. Bakit? Ang tingin ng Diyos sa righteousness of men is a self-righteousness. At ang sabi para sa maruming basahan. Narinig ko po kay Pastor Wilbert, ito palang ibig sabihin nito. Yung may mga ketong noon. Dahil ang ketong po, ito'y kinakain ng iyong laman. At habang ito'y naagnas, pinupunasan po ng basahan. At ang tinutukoy ng Diyos dito na filthy garment is none other than the garment na pinupunas sa isang may ketong. Nakita niyo ang gano'ng karumi? Yun po ang description ng Diyos sa righteousness ng tao. Kaya kahit gaano kabait ang isang tao, kahit gaano siya kamatulungin, gaano siya ka mapagmahal, pag siya po ay hindi na-encounter, hindi niya na-encounter ang Panginoong Jesus at tinanggap bilang personal na Panginoon at tagapagligtas ang kanyang buhay, that righteousness will only fall to the category of the righteousness of man, which is self-righteousness. Yan po natin ang sabi ni Pastor Wilbert, the righteousness of man comes from his own way of setting his own standard on how to live right with God. Ito po ang hindi maayos pagdating sa righteousness ng tao. Kasi siya ang nagsiset ng standard kung paano siya mabuhay sa harapan ng Diyos. That is why marami mga tao, although they are helping others, parang ganito ho, para maintindihan natin. Isa pong sugarul. Ay si Robin Hood na lang para maganda. Ginawang pa kasi ng pelikula eh. Si Robin Hood, magnanakaw siya sa mga ibang tao, tapos dadalhin niya doon sa mga taong mahirap at doon niya ibibigay. Alam niyo pag tinitingnan mo, mukhang maganda eh. No? Kasi biruin mo, nakatulong siya doon sa mga mahihirap. Pero hindi alam, ang mga mahirap alam naman nila na galing sa nakaw. So, tingin ng mga tao, ng mga tinutulungan, that is a righteous act. But in the eyes of God, hindi ka pwede magbigay ng mga bagay na ninanakaw mo. So, naunawaan po natin, maraming mga matulungin sa kapwa, maraming mga sumusuporta sa mga foundations, but on the other hand, they are doing other monkey business. That is the righteousness of man. The righteousness of man comes from his own way of setting his own standard on how to live right with God. My friends, I want to submit this report to you. When it comes to the righteousness, to righteousness, 
It is God's standard that will prevail, not the standard of man. Now, religion is the making of self-righteousness of man. Kaya nga po itong mga relihiyon, anong sinasabi? Basta makapasok lang ng simbahan, walang naintindihan sa sermon, walang nagbabago sa buhay, at least nagsisimba. That is religious mindset. Ganon din sa church. Yung simba ng simba tuwing linggo, pakinig ng pakinig ng mensahe, hindi naman ina-apply. At sinasabi, at least nakinig ako ng mensahe ni Pastor kanina, pumunta ako sa simbahan kanina, nagpuri ako sa Diyos. But, nothing changed. Ang tawag po dyan, religiousity. Yung matagal ka nang nag-church pero walang nagbabago sa buhay mo. Religious po yan. Dahil ang tunay ho, gaya na natin na pag-aralan na karang linggo, ang tunay ho na sumusunod kay Kristo. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, behold, the new has come. Pangalawa, good works is man's idea of saving himself and be in right standing with God. There are people who are doing just like Robin Hood. Eh, no? Sorry, no? kung mga fans kayo ni Robin Hood, ha? ano lang po natin, itama lang po natin. Si Robin Hood, ang mga siya po ay magdanakaw, kukuha ng area ng iba, at ipamimigay niya doon sa mga tao na ngailangan. Eh, sa palagay ng iba, eh, kaya nga pag siya hinuhuli, hindi po siya ay sinusuplong ng mga taong naroon. Bakit? They are recipients of the of the help na galing kay Robin Hood. Ayaw kong tawagin blessing. Help. But, in reality, when it comes to the law, he is violating the law. Violating the law. But again, because of good works, kaya maraming iba, maraming kasalanan na ginagawa, tahimik palihim para wag mahalata, gagawa ng mabuti sa pamagitan ng pagtulong. That is also filthy rugs before God. That's just a filthy garment. Why? Tingnan natin ha, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No matter how good a person is, no matter how religious a person is, no matter how helpful that person is, if he's doing sin, he still falls short of the glory of God. Hindi niya naabot ang Diyos. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Ang kaligtasan ho ay biyaya ng Diyos. Ito'y hindi galing sa gawa ng tao, hindi galing sa pagsisikap ng tao. Dahil nga, ang lahat ng pagsisikap at katuwiran ng tao ay maruming basahan lamang, basahan na pinampupunas sa sugat ng, may, ng isang may ketong. Alam niyo yung may ketong? Yan po ay curse nung time noon sa Israel. At pag ikaw ay nadikit yung damit mo sa may ketong, consider ka rin na unclean. That's why ang, ang kagandahang loob, ang, ang katuwiran ng tao, ay maruming basahan lamang. Basahan na pinampupuna sa may ketong. Anong ibig sabihin? Unclean. Righteousness of man is an unclean thing before God. Good traditions of man will not make us righteous before God. Itong mga tradisyon. Tingnan natin. Matthew 15, 1-3. Then some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? And they do not wash their hands when they ate bread, bread, and he answered and said to them, "Why do you, your, why do you yourselves, why do you yourselves also break the commandments of God for the sake of your tradition? Why? Because nagiging ang tradition ng mga mga scribe at mga pariseyo noon anong ginagawa nila? They are they gave more emphasis on the outward traditions rather than cleansing the hearts of people." By the word of God. Ang kanilang paglilinis ay puro lamang panlabas. Pero yung loob, yung puso, hindi nililinis. That is why, nung sinabi nila, ang inyong mga disciples sa hindi naguhugas ng kamay bago kumain, sumagot ang Panginoon. Bakit kayo rin? Binibreak ninyo ang commandment ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng inyong tradisyon. Marami po mga tao, pagdating sa mga tradisyon na kanilang nakagisnan, they are willing to break the law of God. There are also people in the church, the people of God, for the sake of their own interest, they are there giving shame to the name of the Lord, even not giving importance to the death of Christ on the cross of Calvary. 
just for them to look good before people. These are the righteousness of men. Colossians 2 verse 8, See to it that there is no one who takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception in accordance with human tradition, in accordance with the elementary principles of the world, rather than in accordance with Christ. Nakita ni Pablo dito sa mga taga-Colossus na kung saan marami pa rin mga tradisyon na gawagawa ng tao ang sabi ni Pablo na why hindi kayo madala sa mga pilosopi at mga tradisyon ng mga tao bagkos kayo ay mamuhay ayon sa buhay na inilethala at ipinamuhay ni Kristo Jesus na siya namang minumodel ni Pablo. Tingnan niyo pa ako mabuti mga kapatid. Even churches today, they have lots of traditions. Nakakatawa nga ho minsan. Kasi even in Christian churches, mas mahalaga yung tradisyon, the bylaws of people. Hindi, wala po ako again sa mga bylaws. Eh. But sometimes, there are bylaws of men, laws created by men, that go against the word of God. At sasabihin natin, we will justify. No, 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 no. no. One of the definition of the Bible or the Word of God is the Bible is the supreme authority. Wala nang hihigit pa sa Biblia. Kaya anything na ginagawa ng tao na sa akala niya tama, kaya nga righteousness of men. All the righteousness of men is just like a filthy rag. Ano yung filthy rag? Yun yung basahan na pinamumunas sa mga, sa mga may ketong. Tinapakita ng Diyos. Ganun ka Sidhi ang definition ng Diyos pagdating sa righteousness of men. It is just like a filter. Kahit na maglakad ka pa ng paluhod simula sa simbahan, sa pintuan, hanggang sa altar. It is considered by God as filter. Why? Because lahat ng ginagawa ng tao, kabutihan ng tao, will not save him. Yan sabi ng Panginoon sa Ephesians 2, and 9, For by grace you have been saved. Grace is God's unmerited favor to an unworthy person. Lahat naman tayo hindi karapat-dapat for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. That is why yung pagliligtas sa atin, yung kabutihan natin, ay wag nating ipagmalaki. Bagkos ipagmalaki natin ang kamatayan ni Kristo sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Siya nagbibigay sa atin ng kaligtasan. And by doing this, what will happen? Patuloy tayong pagpapalain ng Panginoon. Pangalawa, let me define you the righteousness. Number one, the righteousness of man. This time, the righteousness of God. In Genesis 15, 1 to 6. Please look at your screen and read with me. And sabi po, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am your shield. I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, Lord, Lord God, what will you give me? Since I am childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Abram also said, since you have given me no son, one who has been born in my house is my ear. Then behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, This man will not be your ear, but one who will come from your own body shall be your ear. And he took him outside and said, Now look towards the heavens and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Then he believed in the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. My friends, let me introduce to you the righteousness of God. When Abraham was still childless, nag-usap sila ng Panginoon at ang sabi ng Panginoon, your descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the skies. Sabi ni Abraham, I have no son. I have only a servant in the name of Eliezer of Damascus. Siya ang magmamana ng aking mga ari-arian. Sabi na Lord, no. You will have your son from your own body. At ang sabi po ng Bible, although Abraham was already 75 and his wife Sarah was 65 years old and barren, paog, but ang sabi ng Bible, then he believed in the Lord and he credited it to him in as righteousness. The righteousness of man, kailangan niya ng so much effort only to boiling down the effort of man only boils down to nothing. But the God, the righteousness of God, all you need to do, just like Abraham, is to believe the word 
of God. And the moment you believe God's word, it will be credited to us as righteousness. Ano ho ang unang ang una pong pinag-usapan natin how to govern and prevail? We should live and preach righteousness. And the moment we possess the righteousness of God, how? By believing the word of God. God said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be your present help in times of trouble. Where does my help come from? I look up my eyes on the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Let us believe what the word of God says. The moment we believe, just like Abraham, although he was 75 years old, although his wife was already 65 years old and barren, but still he believed in the Lord. It seems so impossible. Why? Because God compared it to the stars, the numbers of stars in the sky. And look at his body. Siya po ay matanda na at ang kanyang asawa, baug pa. But still, Abraham believed in the Lord. And God credited it to him as righteousness. Nakita niyo ho ang kaibahan? The righteousness from God. How to receive it? By simply believing his word. That is why, hindi talaga pwedeng isang tao hindi nakikinig na salita ng Diyos. Kaya ang demonyo nag-overtime, hindi, hindi lamang nag-overtime, nag-double time, na alisin ang interes ng tao sa pakikinig ng salita ng Diyos. Ako po'y nakikiusap. I-share nyo po ang pinsayang ito. I-share nyo sa inyong mga Facebook para marinig ng iba. Why? Because people, ayaw ng demonyo marinig ang mga salitang katulad nito. So that people will not listen to the Word of God. If they cannot listen or hear the Word of God, then they have nothing to believe. And if they have nothing to believe, then they will continue to live an unrighteous life. And if the person if a person is living a righteous life, carrying the righteousness of man, then it will become a filthy rug before God, a filthy garment, and the Lord cannot bless an unrighteous person. Malina ho. So how to receive the righteousness of God? We should believe the word of the Lord, even if it is impossible in our mind, it is impossible to understand, but still Abraham believed, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Maaring sa panahon ngayon, napakahirap paniwala na tayo po'y pagpapalain ng Diyos. Parang napakahirap pong paniwala na tayo kayang i-prosper ng Diyos. Well, the word of God had been released already. The devil came, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give them abundant life. Palagay niyo, nagkamali si Lord sa pagsabi sa John chapter 10, verse 10b. Hindi ho. Pag sinabi ng Diyos, again, the word of God is always final. It has no revision, no alteration, and no no revisions. Malinaw? That is final. That is why, sinabi ng Panginoon, I came that they may have life and have it to the full. Sa Tagalog, ako'y naparito. Kung naparito, magnanako para magnaka magwasak at pumatay. Ako'y naparito para bigyan ng mga tupa. Ang mga taong nabubuhay sa katuwiran, ang mga taong sumusunod sa akin, ang mga taong sumampalataya sa akin, sabi ng Panginoong Jesus. Kung sila'y bigyan ng buhay na ganap at kasiyasiya. When you speak about ganap, in English it is perfect. Kasiyasiya, joyful life. Can we enjoy it during pandemic? Yes. How? By believing the word of the Lord. And it will be credited to us as righteousness from God. Believing the word of God, sabi ni Pastor Wilbert, believing the word of God is what will position us in the right standing with God. Every time you listen to the word, every time you hear the word of God, do not look at your situation just like Abraham. Hindi niya tinitinan na sitwasyon niya, matanda na ako, napakarami ng bituin sa langit, countless, yan ang magiging mga anak ko. Hindi niya tinignan si Sarah na baog ang kanyang asawa, hindi. Ang nakikita niya, tinitingnan niya yung pangako ng Diyos. The moment we believe the word of God, it will position us in a right standing with God. And if we are in the right standing with God, get ready. Because what God had promised to Abraham, what it seems impossible for men, is possible with God. And we are now the descendants of Abraham. Kung ikumpara natin ang mga mananampalataya sa buong mundo, they are just like stars in the sky. Tanong, tinupad ba ng Diyos sa kanyang pangako? Tinupad. Why? Because God is a faithful God. 
God is a true God. He never lies. And what He had started, He will surely finish. Nung nagsimula siya mangusap kay Abraham, nagsimula siya magtrabaho sa buhay ni Abraham. Patay na ho si Abraham. Pero tuloy-tuloy pa rin po ang pagkilos ng Diyos sa mga anak at mga ina po ni Abraham. Bakit? Kasi gusto niyang patunayan ang kanyang sarili. At wala na ang Diyos. Kung baga ang Diyos wala nang papatunayan dahil tapat siya magpakailanman. At habang tayo nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos ngayon, pinapakita sa atin ng Panginoon, just believe my word, just believe in what I say. Do not look at your situation. If your situation is unfavorable, then just believe the word of God because the word of God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will bless you with abundant life. I will prosper you I, for I know the plans I have for you, plans are to harm you, but to but not to harm you, but to uh, prosper you and to give you hope and a future. That is final. No revision, no alteration. Malina ho, mga kapatid. 2 Corinthians 5.21 how to receive the blessings of the Lord. He made him who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Paano ang tao ma-receive ang righteousness ng Panginoon? How, how we will become righteous? How we were being made righteous before God? Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has no sin, became sin. He did not become a sinner. He, he was made sin. Siya naging kasalanan. Hindi naging makasalanan. Naging kasalanan. Upang tayong mga makasalanan ay maging matuwid sa harapan ng Diyos. So the righteousness of God is freely given to a person who is willing to believe in the Word of God. To believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we call positional righteousness. We are being positioned by God, although we are still here on earth committing sin, but our position in the Spirit through Christ is we are made righteous before God. His death on the cross purify us and cover us so that every time we appear before God in prayer, ang nakikita ng Panginoon, ang dugo ng Panginoong Heso Kristo, na siyang naglukob at nagcover sa atin. But God doesn't want us to remain in positional righteousness. He wants us to live a life of righteousness. Positional right, positionally, we were made righteous. Pero lagi natin tandaan, hindi nakikita ng mga tao yung ginagawa ng Diyos sa loob natin. That is why your positional righteousness must be translated into an experiential righteousness. Para makita ng mga tao kung anong klaseng buhay Anong klaseng pagbabago ang ginagawa ng Diyos sa loob ng puso natin? Kailangan itong mag-manifest sa buhay natin. That is why a very good example si Apostle Pablo in Galatians 2.20 ang sabi niya, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which now I live in the flesh, I live it for the glory of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself. Alinaho? So tayo ho, ay mayroon ng positional righteousness. But God wants us to live a life of righteousness. Kailangan yung positional, yung nangyayari sa loob natin, kailangan mag-manifest sa labas that people will see what God had done in our lives. Kaya sabi niya, let your light shine before men so that people will glorify your Father in heaven. Sad to say, marami mga Kristiyano na natili lang sa positional righteousness. Tinan niyo pa ako mabuti. Very crucial lang akin sa sabihin. Listen to me carefully. If we will remain in our positional righteousness, there is a big tendency that we will going to abuse that positional righteousness. Kaya nga marami mga nagtuturo, once saved, once you are saved, no matter what, what you are going to do, even if you are sinning already, you are saved forever. That is not true. Because the next thing nagagawin ng isang tunay na ligtas. Tunay na naka, nakaranas ng kaligtasan mula sa Panginoong Hesus at tunay na nabubuhay sa katuwiran ang kanyang kasunod na ginagawa. Kung ano ang ginagawa ng Diyos sa kanyang buhay, ito'y kanyang minamanifest sa kanyang katawan, sa kanyang sarili para makita ng mga tao ang liwanag, ang ilaw na ginagawa ng Diyos sa pagtanglaw sa buhay ng taong ito. At pag ito'y nakita nila, dating masama, ngayon naging mabuti. Dating magnanakaw, ngayon ay tumutulong na. Dating mapagmura, ngayon ay 
nagpupuri na sa Diyos. And that will convince people not to praise the man, but to praise the God who changed the man. Malinaw ho? Sabi ni Pastor Wilbert Buchal, it is through knowing and doing the will of God revealed in His Word that will keep us in the path of righteousness. So mahalaga talaga na palagi nating nalalaman ang salita ng Diyos, palagi nating ginagawa ang kalooban ng Diyos, paano malalaman ang uh, uh, salita ng Diyos, paano natin magagawa ang kalooban ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ho ng mga salita ng Diyos na naipahayag sa atin, katulad po nito. If you want to prevail and if you want to govern, let us live and preach and be a preacher of righteousness. Psalms 23 verse 3, it says, He restores my soul. He guides me in the path, paths of righteousness for the sake of His name. Even the Lord God, ang gusto ng Panginoon, akayin tayo sa isang daan, daang matuwid. Hindi kung anong mga daan, daang matuwid. Bakit? For His name's sake. Why? Because God is a righteous God. And if you are professing that you're a Christian, if you are professing that you are following God, then God is expecting you to walk in the path of righteousness. And if you are a believer of God, living in righteousness, preaching righteousness, it will be easy for you to walk in the path of righteousness. Because you are listening to God. You are obeying the word of God. Alina ho? Marami yung nagsasabi, born again, Christian, whatever, ano man tawag mo, pinagmamalaki mo pang kinabibilangan mo, di naman ho masama yan, pero again, God is more concerned of the life behind the profession. Marami nagsasabi, matagal na ako sa church, God is not after the years of being, of your years of being a Christian. God is more, is after the life behind the years of Christianity that you have. I am a worker of the church. God is not after your ministry. He is after the life of the one doing the ministry. Mahalaga ho ito, mga kapatid, itong ating pinag-uusapan. Hey, Pastor, I'm listening the word of God. I am, I am giving my, uh, my uh, tithes and offering. It's good. But again, you have to give that. Why? Because it is not yours. It's God's. It belongs to the Lord. But again, more than tithes and offering, God is after the life of the person behind the giving. Malina ho, mga kapatid. Ito ho ang pangungusap ng Diyos para ho tayo mapossess ma ma natin ang grace to govern and the power to prevail. Let us live in righteousness. Let us live our lives praising and worshiping God. Let there be keeping ourselves in the path of righteousness. Number one, letter A, live and preach righteousness. Tama po ba? Yung po yung una, no? Tignan natin, ano? Live and preach and be a preacher of righteousness. Letter B, sabi po rito sa ating pinag-aaralan, keeping ourselves in the path of righteousness. Tignan niyo pa kung mabuti. Hindi po komo tayo po ay nagkaroon na ng positional righteousness. At habang ito'y ina-apply na natin, lagi nating tandaan, as long na tayo po ay nandito sa lupa, mayroon pong demonyo na palagi nagpaplano ng mga bagay na kung saan tayo po ay dalhin sa daan ng kasamaan. There are temptations, there are attacks, schemes of the enemy na ginagawa against us so that maapektuhan po ang ating paglakad sa path of righteousness. That is why it is very important to understand how to keep ourselves in the path of righteousness. Mahalaga po yan. Kasi, as long na nandito ka sa mundo, hindi hulat ng tao sa mundo, righteous. Hindi hulat ng tao sa mundo, lumalakad sa righteousness, mayroon din sa wickedness. Especially people who do not yet know God. That is why, mapapansin mo, these people, sabi po sa Ephesians chapter 2, ano? these are people governed by a disobedient spirit. Ito yung mga persecutor mo, ito yung mga nagpapasaway sa'yo. Eh, ito ho yan eh. 
That is why to keep ourselves in the path of righteousness is not easy. So we need to understand principles. How to keep ourselves in the path of righteousness. Number one, listen to the warning of the Lord. Sabi po sa Hebrews 11.7, By faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence, prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the, right, of the righteousness which is according to faith. It is very important to, to listen to the warning of the Lord. Ito pong pangyayaring ito, simula March 2020 until now. This is a warning for God, from God. Kaya nga sabi doon sa Isaiah 26 verse 9, When judgment comes on earth, the people, the people learn righteousness. So mahalaga ho ito yung pangungusap ng Diyos. Kasi nga ang punot dulo ng lahat ng ito, haharap tayo lahat sa Panginoon. Pagsusulit tayo. Mabuti man o masama ang ating ginagawa. Hayag, hayag man o lihim, pagsusulitan natin lahat sa Panginoon. At alam na ng Diyos ang magiging conclusion pag ang isang tao hindi mabubuhay sa righteousness, alam niya na ang conclusion kung ano ang tatanggapin ng tao nito sa halip na pagpapala, baka sumpa. That is why God is calling us. God is giving the people a warning. If you will not change, there will be another judgment that will come. But God forbid, wag na pong ipag, ipagpa ipahintulot ng Diyos. That is why narito po tayo pinadala ng Panginoon para mangusap Para magpapaalala sa atin. If there are things that needs to be stopped, if there are things that needs to be eradicated, if there are things that needs to be eliminated, to be cut off, then let's do it. Listen to the warning of the Lord. Pag ang Diyos po nag-warning, hindi po siya mag-warning na para nagbibiro. Because isa lang pagkakakilala ko sa Diyos na sinasamba natin, sa Diyos na hindi nagbibiro. Pagka sinasabi niya, gagawin niya. Pag pinangako mo, pangahawakan niya. Malinaw ho? Kaya mapapansin mo si Lord pag nakipag-covenant kay Abraham, kay Isaac, kay Jacob. Patay na ho si Isaac, patay na si Jacob, patay na si Abraham. Pero yung kanyang covenant, dahil hindi siya nagbibiro, totoo siyang Diyos, tinutupad niya pa rin hanggang ngayon, hanggang sa mga panahon at sa oras natin ngayon. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 to 10. For if God did not spare angels when they sin, but cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness, held for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, and if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them an example of what is coming for the ungodly, and if he rescued righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the perverted conduct of unscrupulous people, for by what he saw and heard that righteous man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul tormented day after day by their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from, the, from a trial and to keep their unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment, and especially those who indulge the flesh in its corrupt passion and despise authority, reckless, self-centered, and speak abusively of angelic majestics, maj majesties without trembling. Ito ho, pinapakita po sa atin ng Panginoon, mga kapatid. Oh. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Although tiningnan namin nila Pastor Wilbert, he built the ark for 120 day, 20 years. Ganong katagal. But preaching 120 years, nobody believed. Why? Because marahil isang dahilan, hindi pa nakarana sa mga tao ng baha. Hindi nakatikim ng ulan. Puro hamog lang. That is why it is very impossible for men to believe. But again, tingnan niyo pa ako mabuti. Mga kapatid ko na masisipag sa gawain ng Diyos. Huwag po tayo magsawa sa pangangaral na salita ng Panginoon. Even if people will reject us, even if people will not listen to us, just like Noah, just keep on preaching. Just keep on sharing the word of God, no matter what happened, whether people will listen or not. Why? Because in due time, nung dumating ang araw ng paghukom ng Panginoon, ng galit ng Diyos, nung kanya nang ibinuhos sa pamamagitan ng malaking baha, 
hindi po sinuwa na pahiya sa kanyang pagsunod sa Diyos, sa pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos. God saved him, not only him, but including his family. Malinaw ho? Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial. Walang talo ho pag nabuhay tayo sa katuwiran. Madalas sa panahon ngayon, lalo na sa araw ng kasa oras ng kasamaan, kung sino pa yung gumagawa ng tama, yun pa ang pinagkatawanan, yun pa ang pinagbibintangan, yun pa ang tinutuya. Especially if the people surrounding you are living in a wicked thing, a wicked way. Sabihin nila, ikaw na lang ang nag sa santo-santuhan dyan. Lahat naman gumagawa, ba't di ka na lang sumabay? So parang itong sa last day so, makikita natin na ang mga tao na gumagawa ng kasamaan, dahil marami silang gumagawa, pare-pareho sila, nagmumukhang kaaway at corny at killjoy ang gumagawa ng katuwiran. But it is very different in the case of Noah. Because Noah was determined He was serious and he was focused to live a righteous life before God. To keep himself blameless and to walk with God. Tingnan niyo pa ako mabuti. Palay ko itong sinasabi, ulitin ko muli. The moment you make a decision today to live a righteous life, to live a holy life, the devil can do nothing to you because he cannot change your decision. The moment you make a decision to live a righteous life and a holy life before God and to walk with God, He cannot stop you. Why? Because your decision will be accompanied by the grace of God. At ito po nangyayari kay Noah. Sa tindi ng pagsubok, sa tindi ng persecution, sa tindi ng mga pressure na kanyang kinakaharap. Maganda ang sinasabi ng Bible. Sa so 2 Peter 2, 4-10, ang sabi ho, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from a trial. When the flood came, the Lord did give a divine prescription to Noah. This is what you're going to do. Nung matapos po ang arka, pinapasok ng Diyos sila Noah at ang mga hayop at maging kanyang mga pamilya. At ang sabi, hindi po ni Noah kayang isara ang pinto. Basahin niyo po sa Bible. It was God who closed the door. And there is a word in the book of Revelation. What God had closes, no one can open. What God had shut, no one can open. And what God had opened, no one can shut. That is why, kahit na nagsigawan ng mga tao, Noah! Mahawa ka, papasukin mo kayo. Walang magawa si Noah. Why? Because it was God who shut the door of the ark. So, tingnan niyo pa ako mabuti. Huwag po nating hintayin na pagsarahan po tayo ng biyaya ng Diyos. Habang inyong naririnig ang pangungusap na ito, ang mensaheng ito. At alam natin sa ating mga sarili na mayroon pong mga kasalanan o mayroon tayong mga ginagawa na hindi kinalulugdan ng Diyos. This is the best time for us to stop. This is the best time for us to uh, throw this sense sa garbage. Kasi wala po ito magagaw mabuti sa natin. God knows how to rescue us. Pastor, hirap ako, pressured ako, grabe talagang pressure sa mga kasamahan ko sa trabaho, sa sa lugar namin. God knows how to rescue the godly from a trial. Colossians 1.28 So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. As a servant of God, as a pastor, it is my job to inform you, to reveal to you what God is saying from heaven. From the throne room of heaven, from the newsroom of heaven, the good news is being preached to you. You will be hearing a lot of voices. You will be hearing different news. There is, there is a breaking news. A, there is a bad news. There is a devil news. Marami yung mga balibalita eh. And others nga po, maraming tumatawag sa akin, nagtatanong, Pastor, magkapabakuna po ba tayo? Why? Because yung iba ho, ibang balita kasi ang narinig, nakamatay daw yan, uh, galing daw yan sa anong grupo, nakatakot na grupo, sa Antichrist, mga kapatid. One thing I can tell you, 
Pastors, my co-pastors, I am pleading you. When it comes to spiritual matters, that is our domain. It does not compromise the fresh word of God, the Bible, the word of God. What the Bible, of, what the Bible says, what the word of God says, let us preach it to our people without compromise. Pero alam natin lahat, hindi naman tayo nag-aaral ng pagkadoktor. Hindi rin tayo nagiging scientifico. Let us respect the people who are in the field of science. The scientists, the doctors who are, formu who are formulating the vaccine against this virus. Sa aspetong spiritual tayo ho, ay huwag magkompromiso. Sabihin natin ang kasalitanan Diyos sa buong katotohanan. But, when it comes sa science, we cannot separate uh, the spiritual and the science. Why? Because, sa ayaw natin sa gusto, kailangan mayroon talagang ituturok sa atin na bakuna. At tanging mga scientificot mga doktor ho, ang may nakakaalam niyan. Let us trust the Lord. Pag dandyan na ho, proven naman yan, may sample naman yan, may pag-aaral yan, then let us be, let us allow. Naunawaan po natin. Kasi ho, pagka hindi natin yan, pag inutos ng gobyerno, saan na ibig sabihin? Governments or the leaders of the governments are although also orchestrated by God. They were chosen by the Lord. So if we will not obey, what will happen? We rebel against the government and we rebel against God. Now, na po ba natin? So mahalaga eh, given. Iyan talaga hindi, malus, hindi mabuti sa kalusugan ng tao. Greater is he in you than the devil who is in the world. Now, na po natin? Mahalaga ho ito. The Lord Jesus Christ who is in us is greater than the virus, greater than any pandemic, greater than any works of the devil. He is greater. At ang sabi po ng Colossians 1, 26-27, Christ in you, the hope of glory, is the one living inside us. So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom of God has given us. We want to present them to God. Perfect in the relationship to Christ. As a pastor, we need to become preachers of righteousness. How to become a preacher of righteousness? Don't just let your positional righteousness remain inside, but live and walk a righteous life. That is how we preach or how we become a preacher of righteousness. Right where you are in your job, live a righteous life. Wag nating abusuhin at wag nating wag tayong gumaya sa mga hindi mananampalataya. That is already preaching righteousness. Wherever God blessed you, always do what is right before God and what is right before man. That is how we preach, how we become a preacher of righteousness. Itutuloy po natin sa susunod na linggo ang ating pag-aaral and with this, lagi ating tandaan, if you want to receive the grace to govern, and the power to prevail, live and be a preacher of righteousness. And number two, lagi nating tandaan, mga kapatid. Number two, number two is keeping, let's keep ourselves in the path of righteousness. Sabi nga ng Bible, kung kayo malakas at matatag, wag kayong Magkumpiyansa, magpakasiguro, baka kayo ay bumagsa. That is why it is very important to keep ourselves in the path of righteousness by listening to the warning of the Lord. Next Sunday, pagpatuloy po natin ating pag-aaral, stay safe mga kapatid, pagpalain kayo ng Panginoon. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for reminding us that if we want to possess the grace to govern and the power to prevail, we need to, to live in righteousness and be a preacher of righteousness. Help us, Lord, to be like Noah, that he was determined to walk with you, to live in righteousness, and to live a blameless life. If we will make a decision, the devil can nothing has nothing to do with it because the grace of the season 
will be poured out in our lives. Thank you that you are reminding us if we want to receive the grace to govern and the power to prevail, we need to keep ourselves in the path of righteousness by listening to the warnings of God. I pray, Father God, that those who listen to this word today will make a decision to eliminate, eradicate all sinful habits, sinful acts, sinful relationship, or whatever it is that is not pleasing before your eyes. Help us to be like Noah to make a decision to live a life worthy of God, worthy before God, a righteous and a blameless life, and to walk with God so that He can lead us, so that you can lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. This is my prayer in Jesus' name, and I continue to declare your table when I run out of food. I declare a good health, long and satisfied life, and financial blessings are coming your way. Receive it now in the name of Jesus and the blessed people of God declare. Amen and amen. Have a good and God day.